So you see that we are getting 28 US mills, and of that, 4 to 5 is going uh, in operational and maintenance costs. Uh, there's a lot that we have to pay uh, for, uh, uh, yes, okay, that's the next one. Uh, assuming 30% equity and 5.2% uh, US dollar interest rate and an 18% income tax, uh, the developer is getting about 1,000 million outstanding kroner per 100 megawatt. Uh, yeah. So for the 1,100 megawatts possible projects in the next decade, investment need is about 2.7 billion US dollars for Iceland as a whole. Uh, and then secured funding amounts to about 1.5 million US dollars. So we've already secured a number of, 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 of the loans that we would need for this development to occur, but uh, there's quite a lot left though. And the reason why we have uh, 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 suspended or uh, stalled a few projects is because uh, of the high uh, interest rates extra on Iceland today because of the uh, ISAFE loans and the financial crisis. So, uh, a, a, a fact, sorry, sorry. Uh, so a bank uh, uh, in the States, for instance, uh, has uh, increases the interest rates uh, to companies in Iceland because of the high risks involved, they think, at least. But yeah, uh, if you look at numbers in the States uh, for uh, annual operational and maintenance cost, they claim that that is uh, 22 US mills per kilowatt hour. I'm not sure if you realize the difference here. So they claim that 22 to 30 US mills per kilowatt hour. Then uh, that's clear. So their operational and maintenance cost is almost as high and even in some cases higher than our tariff to the power intensive industry. This is quite amazing. <laughs> Either they, uh, well, like you're recording this. So <laughs> Uh, but uh, there is something strange about that, at least. <laughs> so, well, that's at least what they claim in uh, the reports that are made public. Um, but in terms of uh, economical benefits for space heating, uh, you have, of course, uh, the employment in the industry, horticulture, tourism, and in the energy sector, uh, the influence on regional development for geothermal, because uh, Iceland is originally uh, 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 highly dependent on the fishing industry. So you had villages forming around the coast and in areas where you had uh, good harbor possibilities. But because of geothermal energy in some areas within the country, you had, form, you had towns forming there because they had geothermal energy. So this affected dramatically regional development of Iceland. And you can actually, if you go through the history of the country, you can see two towns, one had geothermal, one didn't, the other one went, you know. Uh, the, the population uh, dropped dramatically in that one and they all moved to the one that had geothermal. Because uh, at that time, the, all the, all the uh, uh, state-owned or municipality-owned buildings like uh, school, etc., were built in areas that had access to geothermal for space heating. Uh, okay, then you have the environmental benefits because of the low CO2 emissions uh, of geothermal power plants. Uh, I actually took that slide out. I don't have that one in. That's quite unfortunate for you. But yeah, okay. Uh, so here you see uh, the avoided cost by harnessing geothermal instead of oil. So if we would be harnessing, uh, if we would be burning oil for space heating, uh, the green col columns here show us the cost of that. Whereas here on the, as the, uh, 
here you can see the utilities revenues uh, for uh, the selling of, of hot water. Uh, so here you can see uh, this has been adjusted to the cost price index. You can see how stable uh, the price is from uh, the, the utilities. Uh, uh, but here you can see the increase in 73 due to the Arab-Israeli war and the Ira Iranian revolution in 79. And uh, if we hadn't developed this, we would have had to take this shock here. And then again, uh, we're in the start of a new millennium. And then again, over the past years. And I think, yeah, well, I'm not sure for 2009. We haven't done that yet. <laughs> but uh, it's obvious that uh, the savings are dramatic. And uh, just last year, it was equivalent to 91% of the total imports of refined oil products. So that's all the oil for the fishing fleet and the motor vehicles. Okay, now we, we have something that's very special <laughs> and a bit strange that, uh, you know, uh, in uh, Europe you have the feed-in tariffs, for instance in Germany, for the renewables. Uh, feed-in tariff is that, you're, uh, that the state is uh, uh, subsidizing the price of the electricity or heat from uh, the developer to the consumer. Uh, here is the opposite. Here we subsidize the ones that have to heat their houses with oil or elect electricity. Uh, and the reason why that is done is mostly political. It's from a regional development point of view that you have maybe a town or a, a farm that is far off from the grid, from the or the distribution grid. Uh, so instead of uh, of they have to just take that uh, all themselves, the state subsidizes that. Uh, yeah, but it's not a very smart move from an energy point of view <laughs> because. Uh, uh, it uh, doesn't help up speeding the process of everybody connecting to a, a cheaper uh, energy source, which actually is renewable. But this shows you, this shows you very well that this is an economical source of energy when you're subsidizing the conventional uh, uh, sources of energy. So dramatic, as you can see here. The oil heating here at... Uh, 110 US mills per kilowatt hour compared to the price that we pay here in Reykjavik, which is about 18 US mills per kilowatt hour. This is for heat. Yes? Yes. So you mean that the prices to consumer would be higher if we wouldn't have no, 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 it's the opposite. It would be higher. Ah, that's, no, no, well, okay, yes, okay, that's, uh, that's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> uh, it's unfortunate, you sometimes see this in the news. Uh, if you go through the numbers, uh, you can obviously see that the reason why the price, uh, okay, I don't remember them in US dollars, but uh, in Icelandic kroner, it's 11 kroner per kilowatt hour to a consumer uh, in, uh, in Iceland. Uh, of that, 25% is, uh, is Virisaukaskattur. <laughs> BNT, yes, which, the, uh, 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 which you don't have on the, uh, 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 on the power intensive industry. And then you have uh, uh, 